And our next speaker is Mark Duggan, who is a professor of economics. He's the Trioni Director of the Stanford Institute for Economic Policy Research and the Wayne and, and Jody Cooperman Professor of Economics. So, Mark. Hello, everyone. My name is Mark Duggan. And uh, the work that I'll be presenting today, it, and there is a clicker here, right? Uh, yes, OK, great. And the work that I'll be presenting today is a joint product with my colleague and CEPR fellow, uh, Ramin Taloui. So at CEPR, we've learned that improving public policy through research requires asking the right questions, answering them in a rigorous way, and then distilling the implications for public policy. What I'd like to do today is to lay out a collaborative research agenda with two goals informing public policy and improving the effectiveness of governments. Establishing the right frame for this research can be difficult given the sometimes fantastical understanding of AI among social scientists and policymakers. Boiling down the essence of AI is the automation of tasks previously dominated by humans makes the subject tractable for the social scientist and situates it within a context in which familiar analytical tools can be applied. We can then systematically investigate the impact of such automation on the labor market, on industrial organization, on income inequality, and on global competition. What I'll do, do in the first half of my talk is give a rapid fire overview of these four areas. And for the details, I would encourage you to download the slides. So in recent years, we've already seen how the adoption of information technology reallocated workers in the labor market. For example, spreadsheet software reduced bookkeeping jobs and increased financial analyst ones. Labor economists have demonstrated that information technology contributed to broadly reducing the share of workers in middle skill occupations, thereby pushing many into lower skilled uh, and higher skilled jobs. Looking ahead, work by Oxford, McKinsey, and others have laid out scenarios for the millions of jobs that will inevitably be affected by the introduction of AI. Further research can deepen the study of how conflicting forces of job destruction and job creation net out, what history teaches us about the dynamics and friction in the reallocation process, and in light of this, how policies can help cushion the upcoming transitions. Second, the last few decades have witnessed growing concentration within many important industries in the US and around the world. Artificial intelligence has the potential to amplify these trends, Unlike many other algorithms, performance improvements in deep learning continue to scale with ever greater quantities of data. Combined with the network effects of platform ecosystems, this further increases the competitive benefits of size. Researchers can formalize these propositions into models and testable hypotheses and map out normative implications for the government's role in providing public goods like R&D and open data, as well as for competition and antitrust policy. Naturally, the combination of these forces has implications for income and wealth inequality. Once again, this is not a new issue. Since the late 1970s, we've seen a sharp stratification of income gains. And today, a very large fraction of US households live at the absolute edge of financial insecurity. Economists debate the mix of factors that are responsible for these recent changes. But there are good reasons to believe that AI-driven automation could amplify them going forward. And economists can, again, help formalize causal channels and inform the discussion of how changes in tax and transfer policies might better achieve social objectives. Finally, AI is poised to ch challenge the rules of the game for international cooperation and competition. The research agenda here ranges from how global agreements need to adapt to AI-driven commerce to the impact on the political order and competition among nations. The answers that come out of this research agenda have implications for the broad set of policies that government must get right in the AI era. But it is not just about policy. Government is also a massive service provider, accounting for more than one third of our economy, and with an especially large role in healthcare and education, two sectors where, as we heard in the previous session, AI can be a powerful force for improving outcomes. And government possesses the single most important resource in the era of deep learning, massive quantities of data. That data can be put to use to increase efficiency and achieve social objectives in areas including education, safety net programs, environmental regulation, criminal justice, healthcare policy, and much more. The use of algorithms will raise issues about striking the right balance between competing values such as equity and efficiency, privacy and transparency, and so forth. 
I'm really pleased to say that there is already Stanford-sponsored work to improve the effectiveness of government policy. As Juliana just mentioned, this pilot universal basic income program in Stockton, California, and CEPR is uh, trying to contribute to that effort with a policy fellow there uh, this year. The road ahead involves convening the mix of scholars that can advance this research, as well as educating policymakers about the real issues that are involved with AI. That is what both High and CEPR are set up to do with the goal of a government that is more capable of addressing the critical issues of the era of artificial intelligence. Thank you so much. <laughs>